big lead and lost a heartbreaker. And you have to give the Deacons credit. They only let Carolina beat them once that day. They've come back to win three in a row. Of course, Wake Forest has a veteran lineup, Bob, in addition to an outstanding sophomore in Rodney Rogers, and a veteran crew can respond to that kind of adversity, and they can also respond to the kind of excitement that we have here today. Indeed. It's Wake Forest and those four senior starters with their last shot against the Blue Devils at home. We'll have the opening tip-off right after this word from Pepsi. Today, Pepsi announced a new slogan. Mere words? Or is the taste of Pepsi so big, America's really got to have it? Got to have it. It's something I felt for years, but never had the words to express. If it's so popular, how come everybody's drinking it? Henry's only regret is that he started drinking Pepsi this late in life. The phrase, got to have it, strikes a chord deep in the human psyche. Domino's Pizza presents Naismith Award winners. After Lou Alcindor dominated college basketball in the late 60s, it hardly seemed fair that John Wooden's UCLA Bruins would have another great center. But Bill Walton was a more than worthy successor, surpassing Alcindor to become the leading rebounder in UCLA history. That was just one of the many reasons Walton and the Bruins continued to dominate the NCAA and that Walton became the first three-time Naismith Award winner in 1972, 73, and 74. Number one, Duke and Wake Forest set to have at it here in Winston-Salem. Let's take a look at our starting lineups, the low starting lineups. And for Duke, Antonio Lang with the game winner against Maryland a couple of days ago. Brian Davis and Leitner in the hills in the backcourt. Wake Forest with those four senior starters that we mentioned, King, Medlin, McQueen, and Tucker. And the sophomore is Rodney Rogers, who leads the team in rebounding and scoring at 21.2 points per game. Mike Krzyzewski has 98 ACC victories to his credit in 12 years at the helm of the Duke program. And his opposite number for Wake Forest is Dave Odom, who has beaten the uh, Duke ball club just one time in seven tries. But that one time came a couple of years ago when Duke was ranked number one in the country. And Dave Odom's club knocked him off over in Greensboro. Christian Leitner. And Chris King set the jump center here at Lawrence Joe Coliseum. Dick Paparo, Sam Croft, and Rick Hartzell are the officials today. This one's in the air, and it's won by Wake Forest and Phil Medlin. Duke, of course, starts in the man-to-man -man defense. Thomas Hill takes the job of pressuring Derek McQueen, the point guard for Wake Forest. Here's McQueen. Working up top now, King, guarded by Brian Davis. Shot clock down to 20 seconds on the initial possession of the game. Medlin inside, King missed it on Leitner, clearing the rebound. Pretty good defense by the Duke Blue Devils. Wake Forest, of course, does not mind if the game is played at a relatively slow pace. They like to score when they run the clock down, however. Man-to-man -man defense for the Deacons. With a slower tempo now that Duke plays, possessions really become a big key. Not that many to go around these days when you face the Blue Devils. Well, certainly not as many, Bob, but Duke is a very versatile basketball team. Mike Krzyzewski comfortable playing either side. Great catch. Good help by Fedlin. Laker missed the shot, but Lang is there. He rolls it off, and it's Rogers to clear. Ahead of the pack to Chris King, and he travels. difficult to catch that ball and make a move all sort of in one motion and that's what Chris King was forced to do Wake Forest can get out and run Duke back very effectively on defense that time turnovers have not been a problem for the Deacons of Wake this club averages just about 12 a game Davis driving I think he rolls it in you know, we talked about the versatility of the Duke Blue Devils. They can take any one of their guys, it seems, and place them out at the point guard spot and create a defensive mismatch. And that's what Davis did, driving right around King. Rogers got it around Leitner, got the beautiful lob and put it in. Speaking of a guy who creates a defensive mismatch. Oh, my goodness. No sophomore jinx for that young man. We are tied at two. And this one is swatted out of bounds. The Deacons have won five of their last seven. Their only loss is on the road to Florida State in North Carolina. Leitner. Outside, Davis. Inside, the Hill. Of Lang, rather, fumbled and recovered. And we 
talked about Grant Hill replacing Bobby Hurley at the point. Antonio Lang is the guy who's getting a lot of minutes. Hill converts right there. But Antonio Lang is getting some experience in big basketball games, and this is probably the biggest that he's played in. The silver lining, of course, to the cloud, Dan, is the fact that when Hurley comes back, you've got some guys getting some key minutes, like a Lang that's just going to help Duke be a better basketball team. If that's possible, I don't know how you can get much better than number one in the country and national champs. But Anthony Tucker puts this one home, and we're tied at four. Wake Forest has been able to run their offense, Bob. That's something that uh, teams haven't had the luxury of doing against the Duke defense with Hurley in there as Leitner scores his first basket of the game. Duke trying to set a trap at half court. That one kicked by Leitner. The Deacons defeated Christian Leitner and the Blue Devils in this building last year. This was the first time, though, that a top-ranked team has played in the three-year history of Joel Calisone. And it is packed to the Raptors. Duke in a 2-3 zone on that inbounds play. Duke leading 6-4. Inside, cutting beautifully to the poop. Chris King puts in his first bucket. Nice look, nice cut. Coming from behind that zone. Tough to see the cutter. King with a very aggressive cut. Good catch shot. Tied at six. It's a tough matchup for Thomas Hill. He throws the ball away right there. But Derek McQueen is one of the best defensive guards in this league. And Duke really needs Thomas Hill's outside shooting without Hurley in the lineup. Hill is really the only outside, consistent outside threat that they possess. And so Derek McQueen's defensive work is going to be important today for Dave Odom and his ball club. 6'9", Derek Hicks comes into the game. And Phil Medlin to the Wake Forest bench. Wake Forest looking to take the lead. Leighton, of course, not even coming out against Hicks. McQueen driving, kicks it off, and the dunk. Oh, the junior from Raleigh. Nothing doing outside, but boy, when he got it inside, he knew what to do with it. Great penetration by Derek McQueen. We saw in yesterday's North Carolina, North Carolina State game, that penetration and passing it to a guy inside can be very effective. A timeout on the floor in Winston-Salem. 15.51 left in the first half. We'll be back with more of our coverage after this word from Budweiser. Wake Forest off to the early two-point lead. Wake has been getting easy shots. The matchup with Derek McQueen is going to be difficult for Duke, and you see why. The penetration, the pass to Hicks for the dunk. Bob, Wake Forest shooting four of five. So the team, Dan, Wake been shooting over 50% for the year. And, of course, Duke is the leader in the country and the ACC at 55% from the field. The two excellent shooting teams going at it here in Western State. Six. And McQueen is going to stick to Thomas Hill underneath. Tucker guarding Grant Hill, and that gives the Deacons a good size matchup up front. Laker kicks it out to Thomas Hill, and that's a trap. No, a foul. Foul called on McQueen. That was a real good job by Christian Leitner to hold that ball until basically the whole defense was around him and then to find Thomas Hill. McQueen, knowing that Thomas Hill is the best three-point threat out there, really attacked hard, but unfortunately for Wake Forest, he committed the foul. You've got to look at Mike Krzyzewski on the bench. And I think if you're Mike Krzyzewski, you've got to be a little concerned. His team doesn't seem very intense here early in the basketball game. Mike collects this one. Well, what a move. And puts it in. He just exploded through the lane. You wouldn't expect that he would be able to be that successful against McQueen with a move like that, but he just left him standing. Tied at eight. And tied at every two-point juncture. Rogers. This is Trelawney Owens in the game, number 40. Cross 
half-court pass, but Duke can only knock it out of bounds. The ball was headed right through the hands of Antonio Lang, but Thomas Hill, unaware, knocked it out of bounds. Lob intercepted by Thomas Hill. Deacons have turned it over twice in the opening moments. Inside, Leitner plays it in. That's a great job by Leitner to get himself positioned inside and then keep going to the basket. Hicks just not strong enough to hold him out of there. Owens to the bucket. Backs it in softly off the window. Melani Owens, the sophomore, putting it in. And what a great second half to the season this guy's had so far. He's really come on for Wake Forest. Gives him a very, very potent inside threat coming off that bench. He's played so well, you kind of forget that he had knee surgery arthroscopic back in late December. Tied at 10. Leitner on the baseline. Backs up behind the three-point line. And still have to guard him out there. Here's a travel by Lang. Stay tuned at halftime for details on how you can help choose the True Value Dream Team. 10-10. 13-36 left in the first half. Each team sort of impresses me as playing a little cautiously here early in the game, Bob. It's been almost a total half-court kind yeah, of Yeah, a very methodical pace to the game. Rodgers finds the open man, and Tucker outside. Anthony had just four points in the first matchup in Durham, which was won by Duke, 84-68. He scored four today. Very good ball movement by Wake Forest. Duke in his own defense. Wake moving the ball effectively. Tucker with the open jump. Deacon's on top by two. Late drives. Hammered. A blocking foul. Rogers trying to get in there and bar Leitner's way to the basket. Pretty good idea. He just didn't get himself established in time. Duke obviously feels that they can get the ball to Leitner. There's Owens jumping out at Leitner. Great recognition by Christian Leitner to put the ball on the deck and go around Owens, or excuse me, Rogers picking up the foul. First on Rodney, second on the team. Cherokee Parks is in. And Antonio Lang to the Duke bench. And Leitner to the foul line. It's awfully hard to defend a guy with his inside skills who can move out and shoot it and then put it on the deck and take it around you. A 30-point game against Maryland this week. A rare free throw miss for Christian. 82% coming in. That 30-point uh, effort against the Terrapins. Third to personal best at Duke. And 33 against Georgia Tech earlier this year. 12-11. Wake Forest leading by one, and Chris King coming back into the game. Trelawney Owens goes out. We also have the first Duke substitution, Bob. Cherokee Parks now in the basketball game, laying out. Parks is another guy who's gotten a few more minutes in the absence of Bobby Hurley. And here's Duke again with the half court deep. Rogers goes in. Medlin finishes it off. Well, he got around later in a hurry. Parks came to help, but boy, that was quite a move by Rogers. It's a great move by Rogers, and Leitner was mesmerized by the move, Bob. He continued to stand outside, so when Rogers missed, nobody was there to battle Medlin for the ball. And Rogers takes it away from Parks, and Grant Hill catches up with the play and tips it away. Boy, Rogers had that dunk measure from about midcourt. Now watch Grant Hill come from the wing. He sees his teammate in trouble, and suddenly he's going to explode into your picture. Wow. Deacons lead it by three. Man to man for Duke. Rogers. Inside pass off King's hands and off the leg of a Duke player, and it's out of bounds. That one off the leg of Grant Hill. Lake ball with 30 seconds on the shot clock. Ooh, Rogers, what a 
job getting position inside. King back to Rodgers, Banks lays it in. Everybody on the Duke team had a swipe at that basketball, but Rodney Rodgers sticking it in the basket. 16-11 Wake Forest, and Duke still looking for a spark. Parks, Medlin the rebound. Here's a whistle, and Tucker turned it over, carried the basketball at the top of the key. We've got a timeout on the floor here in Winston-Salem with 11.32 left in the half. Wake Forest up by five. You'd rather walk than drive an American car. You think no... On the strength of eight for 10 field goal shooting, Wake Forest off to a five-point lead. You wonder why you gotta sort of be strong to play inside. Watch Rocky Rogers, moves Leitner out of the way, deals with Grant Hill and Brian Davis. Now, penetration inside. Thomas Hill takes a swipe at it. Grant Hill a swipe, Leitner another swipe, and Rogers, through all those blue bodies, still gets it in the basket. Six, seven and a chiseled 235 pounds. 16-11. Wake Forest, we mentioned, Dan, the, the Wake shooting 80%. Duke's at three out of five. But I think the key thing is there, they've only attempted five shots, uh, nine shots, and made five of them here in the first half of the game. That's not many attempts at all. Of course, Thomas Hill makes up some ground with that three-point. The dog it in the game before Derek McQueen immediately gives up the three-point shot. Rogers, a blocking foul on Davis. We talked about Christian Leitner's versatility, a big guy who's able to put it on the deck from the perimeter and take it to the basket. Rodney Rogers shows you his versatility, too. And again, Leitner's left standing outside like he's nailed to the floor. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the Norwegian Cruise Line Trivia Contest. You could win a great cruise for two. Anthony Tucker gets a breather. Eric Hicks returns. Rogers triggers to McQueen, who's back in the game. Boy, Rogers and Leitner are really pushing at one another. Rodney goes around, finds Park, shoots over him, and scores. Rodney was six here in the first half. Leitner is playing Rodgers so heavily to his Rodgers left, basically giving Rodgers the baseline. Have to believe he's expecting help to come, and that help has not been forthcoming. Thomas Hill just beat the count and got rid of it to Davis. And Davis sticks it. We're talking about a player who's improved offensively by leaps and bounds. It's Brian Davis. 18-16, the Wake lead is two. And here's Rodgers against Leitner outside. King working on Davis. That's a great job moving his feet. Davis really did a nice job. Doggett. Rodgers from the corner. Ryan Davis runs it ahead for Duke. On the break to Leitner and puts it in. Boy, an impossible angle, and Christian Leitner still got it to go. What a pass, what a catch, the big guy out front of the floor. I don't know how Davis sees to make this pass, but the one-handed grab by Leitner, he's able to control it and get it up to the basket and gives Rodney Rogers a little elbow for good measure as they separate. It's a very aggressive play by Davis, a lot of confidence that his big guy is going to catch the ball. Leitner shows that confidence not misplaced. That was a great catch. One for two at the line for Leitner. Missed that one. Medlin and Rodgers, and it's going to be Rodney. You get credit for the rebound. Two fouls on Rodgers now with 9.50 left in the first hand. Tied at 18. McQueen. And that is a foul on Duke. Leitner's first. Second team foul against Duke. And that's really a big foul because that negates a Duke turnover. Right here, some nifty ball handling by McQueen. Gets it inside, tries to pass it. You see Brian Davis coming up with the basketball. Leitner just not able to control his body. Runs into McQueen for the foul. <laughs> Pushing and shoving there. Electric time from Dick Picaro. Aside. 
Bill Medlin now featured the point, but not for long. <laughs> Here's Tucker. It's not the same thing as Rogers out there. <laughs> now we'll see. Rogers goes out with almost 10 minutes left in the half. The Queen misses the three, but we'll see how Wake Forest reacts to Rogers being out of the game. Grand Hill. Thomas Hill. Three. Got it. Second three point of the game. Thomas Hill with eight. And the Blue Devils have taken a three point lead. And Dick Caparo is warning each of the benches to leave the ball alone after it goes through the basket. Next time somebody plays around with the basketball after it goes through the hoop, it'll be a technical foul. Owens. Now up top to King. The runner backs in. Chris with four. Deacons within one. Wake Forest has now made 10 of 14 field goal attempts. Bob Duke is not too shabby. They're 9 of 13. Thomas Hill floats another one home. Double figures for the 21st time this year, and he's done it in the first 12 minutes of the game. Tipped by Clark, stolen by Davis. And when Duke gets that turnover, they're able to turn it into a fast break. Mike Szczeski slows him down. Yeah, we saw the Leighton lay-in. We saw the Thomas Hill three-point shot a minute ago in transition. But now back to the half-court game. On the cut, Grant Hill. Up and in. Well, I think the Duke Blue Devils really feel like they have an advantage against Wake Forest in the half-court game because of their overall versatility and their size inside. And doing a two with Rogers waiting to get back into the scorer's table. Tucker inside King has to rainbow it left it short tipped by Fenlon rebound to Owens the problem for the Blue Devils has not been on the offensive end but they can't stop Wake Forest on this end of the court three-pointer Thomas Hill with a steal and it's a travel when Thomas Hill hit the floor in possession of the ball and we've got a timeout here in Winston Back after this word from our good friends at Budweiser. ACC Basketball is brought to you in part by your Southeast Toyota dealers. Bob Rathman and Dan Bonner at Lawrence Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. The team of Deacons led by five at 11.32 to play. Now Duke leads by five with 7.54 left in the game. Duke getting the ball inside whenever they want to, shooting 73%. Wake Forest still at 63%. Each team's been able to score. Wake Forest with four turnovers, the Blue Devils with three. 14 of Duke's 21 to 25 points have come right under the bucket. They've also got two three-pointers from Thomas Hill. Tucker stops and pops. Bangs it in. He'll try to complete a three-point play as Thomas Hill picks up the foul. You expect your leaders, your seniors, to step up for you in big basketball games, and Tucker certainly is doing a nice job early. Takes the measure of Grant Hill. That's a great stop inside, and Thomas Hill gets that foul because he swings that arm. If he doesn't swing the arm, he probably doesn't get the foul. Anthony Tucker had hit only four of his last 12 free throws. Tickles the twine with that 25-23 Duke by two. Of course, that's been a problem for Wake Forest is at the free throw line, they shoot under 63% as a team. Oh, my. Too long. Tipped by Leitner and out of bounds. Right off his fingertips. Owens doing a very good job being physical with Leitner under the basket, not letting Leitner get to the spot he wanted, and as a result, Grand Hill's pass goes high and out of bounds. Dan, when you talk about Duke getting the ball inside pretty much at will. If you're Wake Forest, how do you combat that? More pressure on the ball outside? Well, that's the best way to do it, is make it hard for those guys to look and see what the options they have inside. And I think that uh, you can be a little more physical inside as well, as Owens was on that occasion. Shot clock at 16 seconds. Rogers will take it. And hit it. Rodney with eight. And the Deacons have come back to tie this one at 25. That's real good offensive movement by Wake Forest. Duke played pretty well defensively for about 30 seconds, but Rodgers broke loose. Thomas Hill trying to post up inside against McQueen. Coming into the game for 
Duke and Mike Krzyzewski. Thomas Hill is the man that's going to go out of the game. That will move Grant Hill, at least uh, defensively now, down inside. He's going to take Tucker. They'd love to post him up. Here's Medlin. With Medlin in the ball game, Leighton really is playing his defensive position in the center of the lane, trying to help out. Tucker scores. Grant Hill the foul. Tucker's made all four of his attempts, Bob, and he's got a shot at his second three-pointer for three-point play in a row. Well, Tucker with excellent job here to move without the ball, then sticks the jump shot. Tucker with the one dribble, gets Grant Hill moving away from him with the real good stop immediately up for the shot. And now we've got a technical foul. A technical foul has been called. I believe it's against Mike Shusesky. Dick Papara coming over. I think no, it's against Layton. The free throw by Tucker is good. Are they calling a contact technical on Layton? Or just unsportsmanlike contact? Okay. the announcement on that. Well, of course, under the new rules, if it's a contact technical foul, even though it's a technical foul, it would count against Leitner for his five fouls toward disqualification, but if it's just an unsportsmanlike technical, then it will not count against the five. And so we're going to have to get that clarified by the official scorer at some point. Well, Tucker puts it home. And the clarification being whether it was ruled as a contact technical foul or just an unsportsman technical foul. Well, Christian's going to come out of the game. And of course, the Wake students are going nuts. And Wake with the rest of the fans. And Wake Forest has run off nine points in a row, Bob. They have gone from five down to four up, 29-25. And looking for more, Rogers. It's out of bounds. Wake possession. Last touch by line. Duke's going to try to pick up the defensive intensity now. We understand that it was not a contact technical. Therefore, it will not count against the five fouls for disqualification. So Christian Leighton gets an unsportsmanlike technical. So the Deacons leading 29-25. 5.45 remaining here in the first half. Roger. Davis just pushing King from behind, picks up his second time. Davis pushing King with his lower body. Gets those legs in there, just moves him right out. That's an excellent call. It's only five team fouls against the Blue Devils. And you just sort of feel the intensity in this game, Bob, that didn't seem there, didn't seem to be there at the beginning. Gradually starting to build here. Tucker. There's that one dribble, the jump stop, and the jumper. Now six of six for Tucker. Anthony had 31 against the Blue Devils in this building last year when Wake Forest beat him. Wake now leading by six. will go out. Very interesting lineup on the court right now for the Duke Blue Devils. Blakeney, Parks, Lang, three guys who haven't seen very much action in big basketball games along with Thomas Hill and Grant Hill. Bill Pettman looking for some help. Squeezes it into McQueen. McQueen, short of the three-pointer, Blakeney in to get the rebound. Boy, the great thing for Wake Forest, Dan, is they have been able to make this run without having to play Rodney Rogers. Well, they put Rogers back in the game at the start of the run, and now once they've sort of gotten to a comfortable lead or a six-point lead, 
Rodgers back on the bench. Dave Odom doesn't want to risk that third personal foul. Grant Hill nearly stripped. Tucker fumbles it, but he was on the end line. The ball out of bounds. Dudu. And the position clock shows 23 seconds. Derek McQueen has really given Blakeney all Blakeney wants out there. McQueen doing a nice job, not only against Blakeney, but it was McQueen who stepped down inside and batted the ball away from Grant Hill. 31-25. Wake Forest leading number one Duke here in Western Center. Hill blocked by Tucker. Foul on Tucker. Grant Hill giving Tucker a little of his own medicine, putting it on the deck, driving into the lane, going up for the jump shot. The look on Dave Odom's face right there sort of says it all. Grant Hill operating on the wing with the left-handed dribble. He's going to take two dribbles and then the stop. Tucker in pretty good defensive position, asking for the jump ball, but he got him on the arm. Tucker is one of those guys who just looks like he means business out there. The Blue Devils, one of the three, now one of four to foul line today. And they have gone a long time without scoring. Four minutes and eight seconds to be exact. Grant misses another one. And Medlin gets it ahead to Chris King. Well, when you're playing a half-court game, Bob, you run the risk of these long stretches without scoring. If you're in the up-and-down full-court game, your transition baskets generally are better to you than that. Trelawney Owens, the offensive rebound. Blocked. Grant Hill takes it away. Thomas Hill. Taken back by King in the middle of McQueen. Up top. They missed the jam. We've got a whistle and a foul called on Wake Forest. The foul is going to be called against Chris King. I think Derek McQueen was throwing that ball to Anthony Tucker, but King never saw Tucker, so you had two of the guys going up there after the alley-oop pass, and they just destroy Grant Hill under the basket here. Hill going for the ball just gets wiped out, and King is the guy who's going to get the foul call. Time out on the floor, 343 left first half. Wake leads Duke. We'll be right back. From this day on, every Domino's pizza will be better than ever. Thirty-five, uh, 31 25 Wake leading Duke here. Foul shooting. A little trouble for Duke here. They started cold to Georgia Tech uh, a couple of weeks ago. One of five today. This is the number one team in the ACC at the line at 76%. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Ray Cobb and Jefferson Pilot Sports and the use of this broadcast without their express permission is prohibited. And we give it grudgingly. Here's, here's Davis out front to Thomas Hill. 3.30 left in the half. Leitner back in the game. Wheeling up and off. Lang has it. He finds some room and gets fouled. Or I should say makes some room. And the personal on Trelawney Owens. You get the ball inside to Leitner, and he really draws a crowd. And because once everybody come to Leitner with the dribble, the pivot, now here comes Owens. Nobody's available to block out Lang, who sort of shoved Owens out of the way to get the spot. Antonio looking for his first points of the game. Rodney Rogers coming back for Wake Forest with 324 left in the half, and Rogers with two personals. Of course, Lang was the guy who had that big offensive rebound against Maryland, and it was on exactly that kind of a play. Leitner shoots the ball, draws the help. Nobody's available to block out Lang. Antonio had 12 points and six rebounds in that game against the Turks. He picks up his second foul shot right here. 31 27. Wake Forest leading. Wake, uh, Duke went nearly five minutes without scoring. 4 54. And Rogers back in the basketball game really needs to be careful. Does not want to pick up that third personal foul, but has to play aggressively. A calculated risk for the Deacons here. Travel on Derek Hicks. Bob, earlier in the basketball game, Leitner was playing back in the lane area and letting his man handle the ball outside. That time you saw Leitner get out, put some pressure on Hicks, and as a result, Duke creates the turnover. Lake Forest leading by four, 255 to play first half. When Leitner really getting bounced around inside. He takes a little walk out of bounds. He's trying to sneak in. 
Shot up just before the horn. Tucker. And out of bounds to do. You know, Bob Tucker's had success early in the basketball game, catching the ball one dribble and then the shot. That time he did not take the dribble. The ball was partially deflected. At least I hope it was partially deflected. Two-minute mark, first half. transition game, Bob, and getting baskets from turnovers. You don't have to earn every one. As Davis misses that one, they've had to struggle for every basket, basically, they've gotten today, playing against the set Wake Forest defense. A four-point Wake lead. And a steal by Brian Davis. See how much easier it is when you create the turnovers? 31-29. The Wake lead is down to two. Big swing there. Deeks had a chance to get a little breathing room going into the locker room at halftime. Wake Forest has gone four minutes without scoring. And now we get a foul on Chris King. Pushed off for position. His second foul. So it's a foul and a turnover. That will give uh, Wake Forest 17 fouls, so Duke will have a chance to shoot some free throws. The game inside is extremely physical, and Dave Odom obviously doesn't agree with the call, but his problem now is he's got two of his inside guys, Rodgers and King, each with two personal fouls, and this game is just so physical, it looks like you're going to need them all before the end of the game. There's Rodgers and King. Brian Davis to shoot one and one. We talked about Derek McQueen's defense against Thomas Hill, but I think we have to say something about Thomas Hill's defense against Derek McQueen. They haven't really called the name of McQueen on the offensive end of the court. He has not scratched. Seven points for Brian Davis. Bill Medlin coming into the wake lineup. Derek Hicks to the bench. And Marty Clark waiting at the scores table for Duke. He'll come in for Davis. If Brian can hit this free throw. 118 remaining. And Davis puts it in. Goes to the bench with eight points. And Duke has come back to tie it at 31. There's Marty, the sophomore from Illinois. Bob, and as you said, Duke went almost five minutes without scoring. Wake Forest, the last time they scored was with 518 left in the first half. So they're over the four-minute mark now without a point. Rodgers, that's an offensive that's foul. An offensive foul on Rodgers. Rodney's third. And how many times do you see it, Bob? A guy in foul trouble either fouls out of the game or gets himself in much deeper on the offensive end, not on the defensive end. And that's what happened to Rodney Rogers. So he must come out in favor of Owens. Rogers with that left hand just pushes Antonio Lang away and not much contact there. But the contact obviously gives him an advantage in that he can get open and that's a call you have to make. One and one for Lang. Three points for Antonio Lang. Antonio, 59% of the foul line this year, gets the bonus free throw. 32-31, Duke. 33-31. We've had six lead changes here in the first half. Duke with some uh, mild pressure, now relaxing as McQueen brings it up. Under a minute to play in the half. Chris King. Pops out, Lang rebounds. And Wake Forest has had to earn every bucket that they've got. Duke playing Duke set defense, and normally that's pretty good. <laughs> I'd say so. Oh, backdoor alley oop, the jam for Grand Hill. And Duke, just like that, has taken a four point lead. McQueen driving. 
Boy, great movement to, by Thomas Hill. McQueen misses. Owen throws it in on the follow. 35-33. That's Wake Forest's first basket in five minutes. Grant Hill looks to the bench. They decide what they want to do with it and dips into its offense. Marty Clark to Leitner off his hands. Four seconds, three, two. Leitner double dribble. is double dribbled and will give Wake a chance with 1.8 seconds to go in the hand. So Dave Odom is going to put Rodgers in. And Parks will come in for Duke. Now is Rodgers is going to inbound the basketball. He's got a great arm. I should say. And that's what he's in there for. He's in there to throw the ball. And down it goes. Grant Hill knocks it out of bounds. 1.1 second. That was a heck of a throw. It went from 1-8 to 1-1. One, one. So Wake Forest ball at the sideline in front of the Duke bench. The only reason that much time went off the clock is because the pass was so hard when Hill hit it, it went flying out of bounds and took a long time before it came to rest out of bounds. Now Rodgers has got to be very, very careful. Inside Owens, tipped away. Duke will go to the locker room with a two-point lead. Intense. And the two-point margin would indicate these two teams that first met in a college game in this state in 1906. And the coaches now are going to get together with Dick Paparo. Mike Stusevsky wants to talk to something to Dick Paparo about something that involves that last play, the scoring, the timing. I'm not exactly sure. He just can't believe that that play lasted just seven-tenths of a second. But Dick Paparo has it all under control. We're at halftime here at Lawrence Jill Coliseum in Winston-Salem with the Duke Blue Devils, number one in the country and the ACC leaders with a two-point lead over the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Today's game is brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. Norwegian for the best. Let us take a look now at the Budweiser scoreboard. Get you up to date on what's going on elsewhere. One other ACC team in action today. And it's number 16, Florida State. The Seminoles in the second half. That game being played, by the way, at the uh, Suncoast Dome in St. Petersburg. DePaul leading by two. Ohio State with a four-point lead over Indiana today. And Columbus, that's a first-half score. They've reached the half in Columbia with Missouri leading by ten. Also in college basketball today, Big East leaders Georgetown with a key win at the Carrier Dome. 72-68, Georgetown defeats Syracuse, and Georgia coming off a big win. They are leading Kentucky 39-38. Our game here in Winston-Salem is at the half with the Duke Blue Devils leading the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 35-33. We mentioned uh, that Florida State game and the ACC representatives uh, led by Tom Mickle and company down in uh, St. Petersburg this weekend to watch that game and a lot of conjecture down in Florida about possibly moving the ACC tournament down there past 1996 when it once again comes open for bids. We'll see what happens down there. Halftime here with Duke leading it by two points at 35-33. Our nationwide Scholar Athlete of the Week is Tammy Reese of Virginia on that outstanding women's uh, basketball team for the Cavaliers. A Kodak All-America honorable mention last year. She was on the East Gold Medal team in the Olympic Festival two summers ago. A sports management major in Charlottesville with a 3.31 great point average. The senior plot uh, to be outdone by Wake Forest. One of the plays that of course uh, Grant Hill made famous in the NCAA tournament was the alley-oop dunk here. The pass to Clark. You can see Leitner pick off Tucker in the middle. It goes to Grant Hill for the dunk and Duke which trailed by five points at one point in the first half, or six, six points, excuse me, then ran out uh, with a five-minute stretch where they didn't allow the Deacons to score and took the lead. Halftime, Duke 35, Wake Forest 33. We will check the halftime numbers and get going with the second half when we continue after these messages. Raycom. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of ACC basketball is brought to you by Ford, Nationwide Insurance, AT&T, Gillette, Nationwide.
Nations Bank, Infinity, and by Domino's Pizza. If you call Domino's now, you'll be enjoying our new pizza with more melted cheese, big, better toppings, and a tender, tastier crust. Stay tuned for the Nations Bank Players of the Game Award. Nations Bank will contribute $1,000 to the Atlantic Coast Conference to be distributed among the member institutions under a conference-approved plan. That is the Nations Bank Players of the Game to be awarded near the end of our broadcast. U.S. Air halftime statistics, outstanding field goal shooting for both teams. Duke at 65%, Wake Forest at 55%. But Duke has been able to convert those nine Deacon turnovers into 14 points and they haven't been getting those kind of transition baskets the last four games. Interestingly enough, we're talking about a game that's almost exclusively a half-court game, Bob, and Duke has a couple of three-pointers made. Wake Forest doesn't have any, and when you're talking about a half-court game, those three-pointers can be a real factor. And for the Duke Blue Devils, Thomas Hill has 10 points. He's 4-4 four four from the field, including 2-2 two of two from beyond the three-point arc. Here's the leading scorers in that first half. Thomas Hill with those 10, as you mentioned, Dan, to top the heat for Duke. And Anthony Tucker, who playing uh, Duke here, brings out the best in him, it appears. 13 first-half points today. Rogers with eight, but with an asterisk, because he has three fouls to carry into the second half of play. And one of the names that you don't see up there for Wake Forest among the leading scorers is Derek McQueen. The Duke Blue Devils doing a real good job against McQueen, who comes into the game averaging 11 and a half points a game. And a young man who had his career high against Duke for years back with 20, had 11 in the first matchup with the Blue Devils in Durham. But he has been silent in the scoring column. Duke basketball to start the second half. Well, interestingly enough, Bob, McQueen has attempted four shots today, missed them all, but they've all been three-point shots. Grant Hill, Thomas Hill, Leitner, Lang, and Davis, the Duke second half starters. McQueen, Medlin, King, Tucker, and Rogers for the Deeks, and Lang with a stick back. And again, you see Christian and Leitner getting the ball, taking it to the basket. As a result, the Wake Forest help has to come, and nobody's available to block out Lang. Bullet pass inside to King. Nice spin move to the bucket. Chris was six. Well, it was a good move across the lane by King, Bob, but lots of times if you're a big guy, you make that move and the guard doesn't get you the ball. That was a great delivery of that pass by Derek McQueen. Tipped by Tucker. Leitner has it, though. Tough pass inside. Now it's Grant Hill to the open man, Brian Diggs. When Rogers just knocked Antonio Lang on his backside, and with three personal fouls, he's got to be careful. Harry scores. Double figures for Rogers with 10. 50th time in his career he's reached double figures. 37 all. Ninth time we've been tied this afternoon. Well, Lang and Rogers really going at it inside. Tipped by King, but Leitner's got it. It's not a good pass. Up and off the window. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Duke by two. Davis. King around Leitner. To McQueen. Lays it in. Thomas Hill with a look at the official as he kind of picks himself off the deck. Wake Forest employing a new strategy there. Let the big guys take it outside and pass it inside to a wide open McQueen. A timeout on the floor, tied at 39 with 17.52 to play. Now this word from our good friends at Bud Light. Everybody cheering on the Deacons here at Lawrence Joel Coliseum in their own special way. <laughs> here are the four keys to the game and uh, the free throw percentage up for Wake Forest by 13 percentile over the regular season, but nothing outside. Well, of course, in a half court game, as you get down to the end, if it continues to be a tight game, then that free throw percentage is going to become very important. And those three-point shots, you can get three points instead of two on trips down the court. That's to your advantage. Here's three for Leitner. 
Speaking of three to your advantage, Leitner moves outside and hits it. And he just passed to Danny Ferry for third all time on the Duke scoring list. King. Rogers. He was stuck out of the bucket, got it up over the rim and in for his 12th point. He and Lang are really banging one another on both ends of the court, and I would think that that has to be to the advantage of Duke. Duke leading by one. Thomas Hill up and in for two more. He had 10 in the first half. His first second half pass. And that's the first time, really, that Duke has been able to use Hill's size advantage down on the interior against McQueen. Tucker and drives that one home. 15 points for Anthony Tucker. Grant Hill barrels in. Tough shot. Tipped up and in. That's Grant Hill tipped it up and in. Tipped in his own mess. Everybody standing around watching the basketball, but not Grant Hill. What a great job to bounce up. 46-43. Duke leading. 16-25 to play the game. McQueen. Missed opportunity from three-point range. Duke playing a little zone that time. Grant Hill ahead. Davis. Concentration for Brian Davis anticipated the contact all the way. But Brian Davis just explodes to the basket. Medlin does not have time to get set. Medlin was ahead of him going down the court, but Davis used his speed to get to the spot first. That's an excellent play by Davis. And Brian will be shooting to finish off a three-point play. Trelawney Owens comes in. Medlin with his first foul. It's going to be Chris King to go out of the game. And we talk about Duke being more of a half-court team right now, but they obviously can still run that fast break whenever the opportunity presents itself. They have made their choices wisely today. That was just a great play by Davis. 11 for Brian Davis, and Duke has its biggest lead today, 6, 49-43. And now pressure in the backcourt. Medlin in the middle, over to King. He'll attack the bucket. Foul on Duke. And it's on Davis, his third. And you know that Dave Odom had to be sitting right there on the edge of his seat. Of course, Dave doesn't sit down. He kneels down over there. But anytime Rogers is involved in contact like that, it's got to be a matter of great concern to Dave Odom. Out front McQueen. 2-3 zone once again. Strength as Lang kicks it out of bounds and a reset of the shot clock. The outside strength for the Deeks right now with McQueen and Tucker, but Derek's been awfully cold from the outside. Now with Duke in the zone defense, you get a lot of different guys who can put bodies on Rodney Rogers. Now Layton's a big guy, but I don't know that I would want to match up with Rodney. Wake Forest is a team, Bob, that shoots the ball very well from the floor, but they get an awful lot of their buckets inside. They're not really a strong perimeter team. Tucker really the only long-range threat of the five guys on the floor right now. And McQueen is cold. Owens. They don't have to worry about it outside. They got Rogers inside. Duke trying to defend the perimeter in that particular defense. Wake Forest, with their patience, just drew the Blue Devils further and further from the basket. And then some excellent, pa excellent passing results in the score. The Duke lead stands at four. Here's Leitner all the way in. And the foul's going to be called against Tucker. Leitner just exploding to the basket. Second foul on Anthony Tucker. What you have to hope if you're Wake Forest is that the help is going to come very quickly. And I thought they called the foul against Tucker, but I couldn't tell from the replay. Could have been Owens, could have been Medlin. There was a lot of guys who got a piece of Leitner as he was going by. They've officially given it to Medlin, his second. Christian Leitner's 13th point of the game. On that replay, you could see clear, clearly Wake Forest simply not stepping into the path of Leitner quickly enough. The help not coming soon enough, and as a result, Leitner gets two from the free throw line. 
He's got 14 points in the game. Deeks attack quickly. Rogers inside Tucker, and Leitner got him on the arm. Second on Christian. Last year when Duke played in here, they established the all-time attendance record. They have broken it today. 14,673. They paid attendance here in Winston-Salem. Tucker will be stepping up to the strike. He's in some very big offensive games, as you can imagine, for Wake Forest. He averages 12 and a half per contest. This is the free throw, though. He's hit three out of five in the game. Dave Odom's complaining about the activity of the Blue Devils on the free throw lane. Lang rebounds. So there was that foul shooting you talked about, Dan. Coming up to bite the Deacon. Wake Forest only a 63% free throw shooting team on the year, and in a close game, you're going to need to shoot better than that. Davis. Thomas Hill will take it and hit it. Three pointer. His third of the game. 54 45. Duke by nine. Biggest Blue Devil advantage. Thomas Hill has very quiet and had a heck of a basketball game. Duke again in the zone defense, trying to match up against the perimeter. Ooh, Rogers comes through and just belts later, establishing position. Rogers. Bodies careening. And another blocking foul on Davis. Duke in the zone defense is going to have some people to help out anytime anybody penetrates into the lane. Davis, however, picks up his fourth personal foul. And again, Rogers in another situation where if the call goes the other way, it's his fourth personal foul. Rogers certainly continuing to play very aggressively despite the three fouls. You'd have to categorize it as on the edge. There's Lang going out. Parks is in. Marty Clark is also into the Blue Devil lineup for Davis. And Davis has been an offensive factor in the ballgame today, so the Blue Devils may feel his loss. Rogers fakes, drives, backs, scores. Wow. 16 for Rogers. He's made all four of his field goal attempts in the second half. Queen. Deacon's looking to run. Back it comes to Tucker. And the rebound to Hicks. Deacon's get another shot at it. Now McQueen with it. Setting up against the Duke zone. That was an important defensive series for Wake Forest. They need to convert now on the offensive end. Rogers inside to Hicks. Back to Rogers around Parks. Hill came over. Ball out of bounds. Last touch by Duke. Boy, Rogers got himself in there, surrounded by Blue Devils. I don't know how Flores <laughs> kept the ball. 13 minutes remaining in the game. Zone is, is a matchup zone defense, Bob. They're not standing around in the zone, and the zone by Duke really looks like a big zone. And people have their hands up. It's tough for Wake Forest to see. McQueen pushes it too long, tipped by Leitner, and controlled by Leitner. Christian back up to Hill now. Parks is the guy that slammed that ball to the floor, Bob, with a great play. He couldn't get the rebound, and then nice hustle by Leitner to go run it down. Leighton taking a breather. <laughs> Don't blame him. <laughs> Grand Hill now controls it out front. 20 seconds on the shot clock. Thomas Hill over McQueen, off balance, air balls it, and Rogers comes out with it. He's got McQueen on the wing, gives it to him, and Derek, and it's locked tremendously by Grand Hill. Duke is running. The bounce to Leitner, and he somehow stuck it in. Incredible play by Leitner. And a technical foul for hanging on the rim. But I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know how to control the ball well enough to even dunk it. Bob, and I think that's what Mike
Mike Stasewski is so upset about with this particular technical foul call. Now here comes Thomas Hill, just pins that baby on the board. Now watch Leitner in full stride. This is an incredibly difficult catch. He's going full speed. Now you're allowed to hang on the rim to avoid injury. And I don't think he was showboating there. He was going so fast, hanging on the rim, stopped himself. Now that's two technicals on Leitner. That's not an unsportsmanlike technical there, though. Leitner, I think, with swinging the feet is what got that technical foul call. Mike Sosewski would make the argument and did make the argument that Leitner was simply trying to keep himself from running into the basket support. Derek McQueen hit the first to free throw. And the second. One for two. Missed the first free throw. He's got three points in the game. And a timeout on the floor. 11.51 left in the game. Duke leading 56-48. We'll be right back. The Duke Blue Levels, Blue Devils with a 56-48 lead. And now this is what the official sees is Leitner dunks the basketball. He swings on the rim. And just at the end, you can see Leitner's mouth open as he starts yelling. And that's when the technical came. I think the official is willing to believe that he's just hanging on the rim to stop himself and still he's, until he starts yelling. And then the official calls the technical foul. You got to remember, that young man has a reputation around the league. Stay tuned for the Players of the Game Award brought to you by Nation's Bank. 11.51 remaining. Second half. Wake Forest trailing Duke 56-48. Here's Rodgers. Right by Lincoln. Going baseline is Rodney. And he puts it home. 18 for Rodgers today. He had 18 the first time these two teams met at Durham. Little confusion on the part of the Blue Devils, Bob, about who was matched up against whom. Grant Hill. Well, that's a tough play, and watch. This just gave Leitner a belt coming out of the from under the basket. 58-50, Duke. Duke stays in the zone. Rodgers. A great play by Grant Hill. Reached around, got a hand on it to knock it loose. Held ball. Possession arrow favors Wake Forest. 10.40 remaining in the game. You take a look at the arrow and the keeper of the arrow. <laughs> and the Dave Odom. And the keeper of the arrow. 40 left in the game. 58-50, Duke leading. And Anthony Tucker to get it in. Medlin on the sideline. Now it goes over to Owens. Can't wait looking to attack the Duke zone. Bob, and one interesting point we might make, that technical foul called against Christian Leitner was his second technical. If he gets another technical oh. foul, he's gone. Any kind of technical foul. That's correct. The third technical foul is considered to be a flagrant technical foul, and flagrant by definition means you get booted from the game. Here's Grant Hill to Leitner. Boy, that is it a up. tough shot. Right over Medlin, Rogers rebounds. Rogers Clark doesn't see Clark. Coming from behind, and Marty knocks it out of bounds. Good hustle by Clark. And here he comes. <laughs> Rogers actually misdribbled the ball just as Clark got there, and had Rogers not misdribbled the ball, I think Clark would have stolen it. Under 10 to play in the game. zone in its tip and Clark had it lost it Owens out of bounds Duke ball well the Duke zone defense a 
again, is a matchup zone defense. It's a very big zone because everybody's got their hands up, and they're really doing a good job playing in the passing lanes. Grant Hill walks it up. picture here in a moment. He's out at midcourt. Luke's starting to spread the floor just a bit here. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. 58-50. Luke on top. Duke just running some time. Grant Hill spins in the lane. Forced it. But hit it. Boy, what a player. And a technical foul has been called. The technical on foul? Krzyzewski. Now, was that on Mike or was that on one of the players for handling the basketball after it went through the net? Remember, very early in the basketball game, Dick Paparo warned both teams that once the ball goes through, you got to run down the court and not handle the ball. One of the Duke players, I think it's Antonio Lang, as the ball comes through, he's going to take it. And he's going to toss it. Of course, he tosses it right to Metzler. <laughs> so Lang picks up. That's the third technical in this game. Two on Leitner, one on Lang now. The way Dick pointed at Mike Krzyzewski, I thought it initially was on time. But it is McQueen to put it in. Well, now, while there's been three technicals in the basketball game, only one of them was an unsportsmanlike technical. <laughs> have to be careful as to which technicals are charged <laughs> to whom and those that are applied to the head coach. Well, any unsportsmanlike technical is applied to the head coach, and you get two unsportsmanlike technicals. Blake Morris has picked up five points on two technical fouls. Let me back up and say if there's three unsportsmanlike technicals, that's the coach's one, and none of them have to be on him. But if you have three unsportsmanlike technicals, then the coach gets thrown out of the game. If the coach gets two himself, then he's gone. So a lot of technicals. This could be a war of attrition. <laughs> it's all over with. Tucker lays it in. These are very technical points on that. <laughs> 17 for Anthony. Deeks within six. Crowd becoming a factor with eight minutes and 25 seconds to go. And Duke's not going to run the clock as they did the last trip down. Thomas Hill, baseline. Oh. No, tip by Laker, yes. Great job by Duke to get it inside to Hill against the smaller McQueen. And again, it's an example of the Wake Forest help coming to the shooter and then nobody being available to block out somebody else and this time the somebody else is late david rasmussen number 35 is into the game for wake tucker inside tries again and that time Lang was there to get the play wake forest has been able to get the ball inside against the duke zone you have to convert that particular play the first time around if you're tucker the second time it's a great defensive play by lang 254. Duke spreading it out. He's what a spot if you're Rasmussen with your throwing that skip ball game. Of course, he's he's known as a three-point shooter, so that maybe has something to do with his insertion into the line. Oh my. Picked off by Clark was Rasmussen, but Hill left it short. Now McQueen gets it ahead. Here's Rasmussen. He'll nearly block that one with his shoe. Derek McQueen did a tremendous job blocking out Monty Clark and then getting the rebound and pitching it down the court. McQueen, not an offensive factor today, but that was a great block out and a great attacking pass. 6'9 junior from East Lansing, Michigan. First point, he had three in a starting role against Davidson here Wednesday. Rasmus, and you mentioned his three-point uh, proficiency, 12 to 26 this year. Hits a ball. 7:03. The time remaining as we take another look at that last wake break 
It's 62-56 Blue Devils. We'll be back after this word from our friends at Bud Light. Two fifty-six, Duke leading here, and we'd like to pass along that address again for the True Value Dream Team. I voted for you, by the way, but I made it postage due. <laughs> well, that shows True. you what you know about basketball. <laughs> True Value Dream Team, Post Office Box three 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 six seven, Charlotte two eight two three three. Bobby Hurley is going to get some more X-rays on Wednesday, and the Duke people were telling us today that they're going to take another look at that foot. Maybe Clemson, maybe Carolina in the regular season finale, but more than likely, Bobby is going to return for the ACC tournament. And all Duke fans concerned about that right foot of Mr. Hurley. It's his brother, by the way, Danny, plays for Seton Hall. He didn't play last night. He's out with a flu. Didn't make the trip to Villanova. Wildcats uh, beat the Pirates last night in Philadelphia. Well, of course, for Mike Krzyzewski, if you're going to make a mistake with Bobby Hurley, you'd rather bring him back too late than too soon. Absolutely. Yeah, the payoff window these days is the NCAA <laughs> tournament. <laughs> That's right. 62-56, Duke leading. Boy, what a screen Thomas Hill just laid on Trelawney Owens. Nothing came <laughs> but he'll really give him a pop. Shot clock 12, 11, 10. Thomas Hill, baseline. Yes. That was a tremendous shot against very good defense. Nothing more Derek McQueen could have done on that particular play. That's just great offense. 64-56. Grant Hill up on him. Here's Tucker. And the foul. And Thomas Hill. He's Duke could not have played that particular play any better than they did, Bob. We're seeing another example where Wake Forest just makes a great offensive play. That was a perfect pass and the perfect catch, and Hill committed the foul, but there was very little else that he could have done. Anthony Tucker steps to the line once again. He has scored 17, but missed his last two foul shot opportunities. Tucker is forced to back to that big guard position. Coach Dave Odom. Is that blood on the back of Tucker's shorts there? Yes, I think it is. He may have a cut to, on his finger, perhaps, that, uh, when he goes to hitch up those shorts. Got a little blood stain. Well, I can understand why people would have blood stains in this particular basketball game. This has been rock'em sock'em. Yeah, this has been most of the game from the school of hard knocks. <laughs> Colors black and blue. 64-57. Duke. And again, Duke spreads the floor, working that shot clock down before getting into its set. Well, this is a little bit of lineup for Wake Forest to play against that spread. Trelawney Owens, a little quicker than Medlin, might be able to stay with Leitner outside. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Grant Hill going to work against Tucker. Leitner down the lane, dumps it off. A foul. The basket. Let's see if it counts. Yes, they count it. Tremendous patience by the Duke Blue Devils. Not panicking. The shot clock is running down. Leitner's driving to the basket. He had a shot. It would have been a difficult one, but he spotted Thomas Hill underneath the basket and dumped him the ball. When the whistle blew, there was one second left on the shot clock. You can't play the shot clock any better than that. Thomas Hill, folks, has scored 20 points in this game. And remember, Derek McQueen has yet to score yet, and Thomas Hill's been matched up against him when Duke has been playing the man-to-man, -man, so Hill has had a tremendous game on both ends of the court. Yeah, the only contribution, really, for McQueen has been the technical foul shots. And we have had a bunch of technicals in the game. And again, if you join this late, Christian Leitner has two technical fouls. Antonio Lang got one. Tucker. 20 for Tucker today. And Wake Forest has taken a timeout with 4.51 remaining. It's an eight-point deficit for the Deacons, and we'll continue after these words. 
Bob Rath, but Dan Bonner back in Winston-Salem. Duke's leading by eight, but a couple interesting points to make, Dan. One is the Wake Forest team foul situation. They've still got three to give before Duke goes to the one and one, so it's going to allow Dave Bottom to go for some steals, a gambling defense to get back in here. And I think that's an important point. You've got to play very, very aggressively. You don't particularly worry about the foul because you do have those three to give. Each team has two timeouts left. Owens pokes it away from later. There's that's example. exactly what you're talking about. You can afford to be very aggressive here. Tucker gets the foul. But again, you play that aggressive defense. You try to get the basketball. This is only an eight-point game, but the way this game has gone, it's been a rather slowly paced game. Eight points actually is a pretty big lead. And out of bounds, tipped away by Owens. And that's what I was talking about just before the break, that Owens, a little quicker than Medlin, is able to stay with Leitner a bit better. Davis gets it into Grant Hill. And you'll note that they've switched, and McQueen is now matched up against Grant Hill on the defense. Leitner, back out to Thomas Hill. Duke with the luxury of the lead, taking their time, burning that clock. They did it very effectively in their last possession, running the clock down to one before score. Now stands at 11. Grant Hill, whistle, five-second violation. That's why you put Derek McQueen on Grant Hill. McQueen able to exert great pressure on the basketball. One thing we haven't seen that much with Grant Hill at the point are teams coming after Grant, getting his shirt, and really playing heads up. Inside, Rogers, Grant Hill there, tied up, jump ball and hell ball, possession to Duke. And that's as a result, that's a turnover. Great defensive hustle inside. Third wake turnover this half, 12 for the game. But a costly miscue. And we're waiting while we get the floor wiped up. 358 left. Pressured by the Deeks. McQueen on Grant Hill. Boy, that was pretty close to over and back. Leitner got those feet down just in time. Leitner throws to the wing. Grant Hill whips it inside. Thomas Hill blocked by Tucker. Deacons, though, are still trailing by eight. They've made a couple of very fine defensive plays, but you need to score. Rogers double. Back out to McQueen. He hasn't hit one all day, but hits one now. And the Deacons take a timeout. Down by five, 67-62 Duke with 323 remaining. We'll be right back. Mastering the right moves on the court makes the difference between victory and defeat. I encourage my players to work just as hard off the court as they do in practice. Because to be successful in life, you need to master the right moves. So stay in school, use your public library, and read. draws to within side, within five, and Derek McQueen, who has been relatively quiet all day, 0 of 5 from three-point range before that shot, cans it. That's what cuts the lead to 67 to 62. McQueen only one of seven from the field overall, now two of eight. Foul trouble. Davis picked up his fourth with 14 minutes to go in the game. And, of course, Rodgers had three in the first half, none in the second. And you cannot say that Rodgers has played delicately in the second half. He, he's been out there banging away. <laughs> they don't call the Durham Bull for nothing. Now, leitner has got those two personal fouls. Christian Leitner also has two technical fouls. So Christian Leitner can't afford anything like hanging on the rim or touching the basketball after it goes through the hoop. Both teams have shot spectacularly well. Duke 63, Wake 58. Five 
point. Duke lead. Deacon still have two fouls to give. Even though they're spreading the floor, Duke still has to attack the basket and look for points. Absolutely, and Grant Hill was open for just a moment underneath as Christian Laker thought about getting him the ball. Davis slides through, missed the lay-in, but it's out of bounds to Duke. King couldn't hang on to it. Tremendous move by Davis to the basket. He couldn't convert. And it's really, I watch as Davis misses this shot. He stays right there, stops, gets his hand on the basketball, and he's actually the reason that King couldn't control it. Under three minutes. And Owens going for the steal, and Tucker ends up with it with Leitner back. Tucker all the way, and fouled by Leitner. Third foul on Leitner, and Tucker will go to the line. And a smart play by Leitner to deny the layup and put him at the line. Leitner made sure that he wasn't going to convert the three-point play. We talked about Trelawney Owens. He knocks it away, and then Grant Hill kicks it away. Now, Leitner's just going to measure him. There's no way he's scoring that basket. He wants an intentional foul. And since Leitner was making a legitimate play on the ball, it's no intentional foul. But if a guy's going to go up in that situation, you belt him across the arm so hard, there's no way he can score. And that's exactly what Leitner did. But Tucker comes back to stick the foul shot. For the Blue Devils, however, they've come down three times now and turned the ball over without scoring any points. We said, we said the eight-point lead was a big one in a game like this, but it's not that big if Mike Krzyzewski's team can't score. Three-point Duke lead, 240 left. And this crowd is very noisy. Marty Clark gets it to Davis. He moves in. Now back out. Oh, what a spot for Clark, huh? And Rogers on it. Thomas Hill. Clock at 20 seconds. Duke doesn't have enough points to win. I don't think. 67. They've still got to look at the bucket. 2-10 to play. And it's here. McQueen's got it. Grant Hill. McQueen to Owens. He fakes it. Scores and a foul on Grant Hill. McQueen had nowhere to go and shoveled it to the trailing Owens. is going bananas. Trelawney Owens looking to cap a 10-0 run that would tie the game if he can hit this foul shot. shot up but McQueen made the pivot turned around and this guy hustling down the court tied at 67 first tie since late in the second first half at 39 all 67 67 do good well, I think the pressure that Derek McQueen's been able to exert on the basketball has been significant in this run the Duke eight-point lead is evaporated, but Brian Davis will go to the line. Davis got himself down in the corner. Five-second count was approaching the end, so he really had to shoot the ball through the foul. Chris King's third foul, and Davis to the line for today. He's three for three and has scored 11 points. Two. Duke leads by one, a dozen for Davis. Wade brings it up. A minute 42 to play.
double team, skips it across to Tucker, scores, and Wake Forest leads by one. 24 for Anthony Tucker, a minute 19 left. Wake still has a foul to give. They can be very aggressive on defense. It's been a week for the underdog in the ACC. Grant Hill, it rolls off, and we've got a foul on Tucker on the arm. Third on Anthony. And Tucker reacting very, very aggressively to that foul call. You've got to be careful in that situation. You're very intense, you're very emotional, but you don't want to pick up a technical right there. Now Grant Hill. 0 for 2 at the line today. And it drops out. That hit every inch of iron available. 108 to play. Deacons 69. Duke 68. Got to get the net, not the iron. Missed them both. A 76% foul shooter. Grant Hill's 0 for 4 at the line. And Wake looking to attack the basket now. With a minute to play, they'll take their final timeout. Sitting on a one-point lead. Fifty-nine, fifty-eight point nine seconds remaining in the game. 69-68, Wake Forest leading. Well, what a week it has been for the underdog in the ACC. It started Tuesday down at Clemson when the Tigers knocked off Florida State. Virginia, a home dog, came back to beat North Carolina in a big way. Duke got a tremendous scare from Maryland at home on Thursday. And then you know what happened yesterday with NC State stunning North Carolina and Georgia Tech for just the second time in their history, beating the Cavaliers in Charlottesville. Wake Forest trying to end the week with an upset of their own. The Deacons will be coming up on the road in their next outing in Atlanta Thursday against Georgia Tech. And we'll have that one for you on the ACC Network, so check your local listings. Then Temple before Maryland and NC State to close out the regular season. Now the Blue Devils, of course, still have a ways to go, literally and figuratively. They've got Virginia at home and Carolina at home, but they've got to go all the way to Los Angeles for that UCLA game, and then back to Death Valley to meet Clemson. And boy, haven't the Tigers come back strong. Cliff Ellis's club with their fourth ACC win yesterday as they knocked off the Maryland Terrapins 82 to 70. But right now, the focus of concentration is on Wake Forest. They've got to get the ball in, and then they've got 36 seconds on the possession clock. And I think that's the important point, Bob. There's almost 59 seconds left in the game. There's 36 seconds left on the shot clock. So Wake Forest, absent a Duke foul, is not going to be able to hold the ball till the end of the game. They're going to have to take a shot. And Duke coming out with its overplay man-to-man. -man. King hands it over. Duke does not need to foul in this situation. They have to play tough defense. Force Wake Forest into a tough shot. 15 on the shot clock. Rogers out to McQueen. He gets leading by a point. Here's McQueen shoveling. Oh, it dropped it. Maybe not anticipating the pass, but it's out of bounds, and Duke will have it. 28 seconds to play. I think Owens was figuring McQueen was going to drive and shoot. The Deacons no longer have any fouls to give. The next foul puts the Duke at the line. The Blue Devils at the line for one and one. That's the time left in the game. Duke is down a point. Same spot they were in against Maryland Thursday. Grant Hill to Thomas Hill. Out to travel. Thomas Hill went down, came up, traveled. And the Deacons with a one-point lead in the ball. Trelawney Owens to get it in. 13.1 seconds remaining. You can see a foul right here. And it's on Brian Davis. He's fouled out of the game. Chris King will be the man at center stage. And he'll be at the line for a one and one King. Two-thirds of the time, hits him. He has hit, Dan, 16 of his last 20 foul shots, but has not been to the line in this game. Marty Clark will be the Duke sub. 
And Mike Krzyzewski using the time allotted to make some final points. And Clark comes in. 11.8 seconds. Well, if you're the Duke Blue Devils, even if he misses the free throw, you've got to take the ball down to the offensive end and do something that Duke has not done very effectively for the last three minutes of this ball game, and that's score. King to the line. Wake Forest leads by two. 70, 68, 11.8 seconds to go in the game. <laughs> Tipped out to McQueen. Blake leads by two. Duke will be forced to foul. Rogers fouled by Hill with 5.2 seconds left. Now the Deacons really have a chance to put it out of reach here. There's only 5.2 seconds left. If they can can both free throws, they can just about nail it down. But for Dave Odom's squad, that big if with canning the free throws. Indeed. That's not money in the bank for Wake Forest. King just went one for two, but they were fortunate enough to get the offensive rebound, and Rodgers, 69% of the line, but he hasn't been to the line today. And he's got a one and one. Great tip out by Owens. Duke's got a chance. They call the timeout. 4.5 seconds left. And the Blue Devils will have the basketball. Trailing by two. Bob, strategically, if you're Mike Krzyzewski and the Duke Blue Devils, you don't need the three-point shot. In other words, you don't have to take some wild shot just to win the basketball game. I'm sure the Duke Blue Devils would be happy if they could get out of here, particularly given this situation with getting the game into overtime. So if you're Wake Forest, you have to defend the whole court. It's not like the situation that Georgia Tech had earlier, where all they had to worry about earlier against Virginia, where all they had to worry about was defending the three-point shot. Yesterday, Virginia's down three. They have to take the three-point shot. In this situation, Wake Forest down, or Wake Forest up by only two. The Duke Blue Devils can take the three, so Wake does have to defend that. But Duke can also get the ball closer to the basket, and so that has to be a concern for Wake Forest as well. The key here, though, is with 4.5 seconds, you don't have any time at all for any fooling around. I was just going to say, Dan, to you, advancing the basketball in that initial pass of the court is so crucial. Dave Odom is telling his players if they're going to catch the ball, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it in front of you. For his team, he doesn't want any passes going over their heads. You want to make them catch the ball so they have to penetrate by your entire team. You don't want them to throw it over the top. Duke's got to go 94 feet. Grant Hill. Long down to Leitner. He's got it. And yeah. the travel. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds. A tremendous heave by Grant Hill. That's really a great pass by Grant Hill. Leitner simply can't control it. You see his foot clearly out of bounds. Now the Deeks throw it into the hands of Chris King. And he's fouled by Grant with one second to play. It's not over yet, but the Deacons are feeling awfully good about things. The free throws would lock it up. Chris King, who has been a four-year starter for the Deacons, scored 31 against Duke as a freshman in the ACC tournament, has a chance to close out his final shot at the Devils at home by sealing the victory. 71-68. If he hits this one, the Deacons are assured of the victory.
Leitner will toss it. The Deacons continue the upset trend in the ACC. The students storm the court, and they should be careful. There's a lot of folks in there celebrating the Wake Forest upset win of number one Duke. 72 68 the final score and we'll be back with our wrap up after this word from our good friends at Bud Light. ACC basketball has been brought to you by Budweiser Nationwide Insurance Central Fidelity Pepsi, Nations Bank, Ford, and by U.S. Air. Travel arranged through U.S. Air, proud to be the carrier of choice for ACC teams throughout the Carolinas. Everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. A tremendous closing rush by the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. They outscored Duke 15 to 1 in the last 548. Duke led by 10, 67, 57, their biggest lead of the game. Scored only one point the remainder of the game. And Wake Forest storms back to win it. Let's take a look at our nation's bank players of the game. For the visiting Blue Devils, Thomas Hill, who scored 20 points in this game. The player of the game for Duke and Anthony Tucker, who pumped off 24, hit two big free throws at the end to help the Deacon victory. He's our player of the game for Wake Forest. The Deacons go to 16 and 7. They beat the number one Blue Devils in Greensboro in 89, 79, uh, 75, 71. And they have beaten number one Duke in this building today, 72 to 68. Back for some final thoughts when we continue from Winston-Salem in a moment. Wake for 72, Duke 68, the final score. We'll be back. Well, for the first time since Bobby Hurley went out with that foot injury, the Blue Devils have lost. And a 10-point lead with 5.48 to play. Say they missed him. I would say that this game certainly indicates to those people who thought that Bobby Hurley may not be an important factor exactly what Hurley means to this team. I don't think with Hurley they lose a 10-point lead in the last five minutes of the game. Wake Forest wins 72-68 over top-ranked Duke. For Dan Bonner, this is Bob Rathman. You've been watching exclusive coverage of ACC basketball on the Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. So long, everybody, from Winston-Salem, North Carolina.